Hey everyone, it's Michael Dougal. I'm a residential real estate agent here in the greater Toronto area. And during this video, I'm gonna give you a comprehensive market update. Do take a look at the YouTube description box. You'll find timestamps so you can fast forward or perhaps rewind to whatever portion of the video is pertinent to you. During this video, I'm gonna update you with the average price. We're gonna talk about the market trends. Is it a buyer market? Is it a seller market? I'm gonna share with you which areas of the GTA are good buys, which areas of the GTA maybe aren't such good buys as well. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll share my predictions throughout 2021. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please click that subscribe button. It really helps to support the channel. And of course, I'm looking for real estate agents. I can let you know why I switched from Remax over to eXp Realty, the first cloud-based real estate brokerage. Call me, call me, call me. My number is 416-671-5218. And let's get right into the video. So I'm shooting this video January 14th, 2021. I'm really excited because we now have all the data as far as sales reported on the MLS during December 2020. First things first, let's take a look at the average price. In 1975, the average price was $57,581, whereas now the average price in 2020 across 95,000 sales was $929,699. That's the number in the table, but take a look at this graph. You see, Many sellers had thought that 2017 was the best time to sell and that the average price was at its highest. And perhaps there may be some truth to that because there are a specific style of property that maybe was selling a little bit higher in 2017. But for the most part, across all styles of homes and across all areas, our average price in 2020 is far higher than what it was back in 2017, 2016, and definitely higher than what it was in 2019. Who knows, maybe within the next year or perhaps the following year, the average price in the greater Toronto area will actually reach $1 million. However, though, if we further do break down 2020 in comparison to some of the prior years, we can see that the number of homes sold or units sold was far less than what it was back in 2016, slightly higher than 2017. Of course, we can presume that this is because of the pandemic, given that the number of sales was far lower than what it traditionally is in March, April, May, and June. However, there were some record-breaking months as far as the number of sales were in the later portion of the year because we didn't have a traditional seasonal real estate market. As a matter of fact, in this chart over here, we're comparing December 2019 versus December 2020. And we can see that the number of sales was significantly higher. There was almost 7,200 sales in December 2020, whereas in 2019, there was only about 4,400 sales. And then our average price was up significantly. In December 2019, it was $838,000. And in 2020, the average price was $932,000. So why did this happen? Like I mentioned, we didn't have a traditional real estate cycle last year. Usually sales spike up in the spring and then they spike up again during September and October time when it's back to school, people come back from their summer holidays, but not last year because during the second quarter, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace, which pushed a lot of buyers to buy in the later portion of the year. And a lot of sellers were a little bit concerned about listing their property. Therefore, in the third and the fourth quarter, agents, we were really busy. Looking at the change in the average price up by 11%, I don't really feel like this tells the whole story. As we dive deeper into the style of property, we can see that condominium apartments they actually decreased in value by 2%, whereas detached homes increased by 17.7%, semi-detached homes increased by 16.6%, and then townhouses increased by 14.1%. And something worth pointing out is that the average price did appreciate more significantly in the 905 versus the 416. We can see that the condo apartments in the 905, they actually increased in value by 6.3%, whereas in the 416, they decreased by 4.7%. If you were to ask which are the hottest cities in the GTA, we can take a look at this because we have the average days on market for sales in specific communities. And this is important because the days on market is generally a good indicator whether or not it's a good time to sell. The days on market, this number does illustrate that. As the lower the days on market, the more easy it is to sell a property. Sellers are looking at putting the property on the market, selling it quickly, likely being able to achieve a very good price and selling their properties without much stress. We can see that in December 2000. 20 Durham was really hot. The average days on market across all areas of Durham was 16 days. We can highlight Oshawa only 11 days on the market and the average property was selling for 110% of its asking price. Furthermore, in Ajax, the average home was selling in only 13 days at 107 
percent of their asking price. And if you're wondering which areas were the hottest in Toronto, Scarborough detached properties is especially hot. If you're considering selling, I would say now is a really good time. Taking a look at that, the average detached home in Scarborough is selling in only 17 days at 105% of its asking price. And the average priced detached sale in Scarborough, so Toronto East, was $1,134,000. And to give you some perspective, if we were to go back 24 months prior to December 2018, the average price detached home in Scarborough was $886,000. In central Toronto, the average days on the market was 51 days. And this was pretty much driven by downtown condos as many of those units were taking months to sell. And then as well as some of the higher end properties like in C12 in York Mills area because the luxury market did experience somewhat of a price dip during this pandemic. I am expecting to see moderate price growth with our freehold properties in the GTA. And for condo apartments, slight price growth, maybe five to 7% during the next 12 months. I've gone in a lot of depth with respect to my real estate prediction which I will link in this video over here. This is especially going to be useful if you're considering buying or selling this year. So be sure to watch that video. You will be glad you did. And if you're looking to buy or sell, then call me, call me, call me. As well, like I mentioned, if you're a real estate agent watching this video, perhaps you're looking at a different brokerage, I can share with you the reason why I switched from Remax over to the first cloud-based brokerage, EXP Realty. Call me, call me, call me. My number is 416-671-5218. Do me a huge favor, smash that subscribe button, and I will look forward to seeing you all next time. Take care, guys.